you know, just go for it. Push that fear away because you're worth it. This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good morning, good morning, Susan Heaton Wright. Previously, episode 710 of the 12 Minute Convos podcast. It's been just two years, 10 months, five days, 20 hours, and 30 minutes since we last recorded our conversation. I want to develop my skills to be the best because there's no point in just staying static. Push, 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 and get better all the time. That was then. This is now. Susan, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing so well and I love your voice. It's such a privilege to be on here again and thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you back on here. The last time we connected, my friend, we had a ton of fun. Uh, Your voice and uh, speaking about voice, you spoke about my voice. Uh, You help individuals with their voice. Uh, First of all, let me say congratulations. I see that you've gotten to your hundredth episode, right? Your podcast isn't one that goes as fast as mine, but you've definitely kept consistent. It's been what, like five years? Yeah, it's five years now. And I've got a core of very loyal listeners. And it's not a massive podcast, but it's a niche one. And I'm proud of that because it's serving my listeners. Yeah, the superstar communicator. I listened to that episode where you were talking about manage your fear. I think it was a very well done 100th episode and oh, that conversation you. of manage your fear it is one of the number one if not number two challenges that you've heard individuals have which is that ability to get up there and speak now please help us understand how challenging it is to do this and how you're helping people with it you know it's really interesting because my personal journey And we always go back to our own personal challenges to help other people. Was that I was one of those tongue tied teenagers who didn't speak in class because others would laugh at me. And even when I was at university, I would be reluctant to speak out in class and share information. And I know now, looking back, A, that I was overlooked, I was underestimated because I wasn't presenting the best version of myself. But also, I had never been introduced to or acquired very simple techniques and skills in order to start self caring and looking after myself so that that fear, I could start to manage it better. Now for those listening, where's the best place for them to connect with you? I know there are individuals that right there would want to say, all right, how do I get Susan to help me with my fears? I have got a website called superstarcommunicator.com and I'm always happy to have a chat with people. I offer a, you know, discovery call, but also the podcast Superstar Communicator. We often talk about fear. Quite often guests will talk about managing their fear when they're doing public speaking or speaking up in meetings or desperate to become more visible within their organization, but they're worried that they'll let themselves down or forget what they're going to say. It's after listening to that 100th episode that something peered through, something peeked through in my imagination that I never thought about. But one of the things you spoke about when we had our conversation is how much you enjoy helping others, but it's so important to help yourself. And then I heard you were a violinist as a young girl. And I thought to myself, Well, isn't that interesting? Because the violin is one of the most challenging instruments to tune, to ensure that the sound that is coming from it is on point. So you've been doing this for quite a bit, right? Helping tune the sound of the instrument. And now you're doing it with the vocals of individuals as well, right? Yes. And remember, I was a professional opera singer as well. So personally, this was what I had to do when I was a singer. And to make sure that the body was working in your favor rather than tensing up because you were nervous, because it impacts on your voice. Hmm. 
Mm. And you also spoke about how other individuals, the negativity aspect of what you went through growing up. I had someone on the podcast yesterday, I think, and they were expressing, you know, I grew up in a home where my mother said it's better to be seen than heard and how that affected her. But what has grown now to be, uh uh-uh, I'm talking. Have you had that experience as well? Oh, definitely. It was very much, I was often told that I was bossy. Now, ladies that are listening to this podcast, will it will resonate with them because we know that bossiness in a male would be considered leadership skills. But for a woman, it's a negative connotation, particularly when you're a child. So I would speak out about things and be told, no, stop. And in the end, you become mute. Now, as a prefect at 17 (laughs) years old, right, you did something. And I thought, yes, yes, yes. It's managed by fear. Yes. And I'll let you open up that story. But at the same time, I think it's so intriguing that the innovation in fear still gets the job done, right? (laughs) So, yeah, share that story, please. Um, I was at a school in the United Kingdom, a girls' school, And some of the very senior girls get picked to be prefects. So they are doing some of the management of the school. And one of our roles was that every term, each of the prefects had to lead the the prayers and the assembly in front of the entire school. That was beyond me fear-wise. So I used some of my clothing allowance and pocket money to pay one of the other prefects to do it. (laughs) Hmm. And I think there are so many individuals that have experience like that, where it feels as though it's better to avoid the particular scenario and they're losing an aspect of their life and they feel it. You felt as though it was something, I'm guessing when that person was speaking, that you could have been doing. Did it feel that way? It's interesting because there was huge relief. But if I'm honest, and I've never thought about this before, I think there was an element of, well, I'm below the salt. I, I'm not worthy to be there. Hmm. That's an interesting one, isn't it? It is. It is. Because today, it's a thought that you needed to overcome to be able to do what you're doing for yourself. And in so doing, you're helping other individuals. That ideal client looks like that individual, right? Who Mm -hmm. has that challenge and what you can help them. We spoke about walking the talk. You're helping from a position where you were there. Yes. And that helps a lot, doesn't it? Oh, it really does. And people look at me and they they say, well, it's okay for you. You've not had these problems. And I say, well, (laughs) actually, that's not the case at all. Hmm. So I would like to say that I am very proud to be able to give you a call and hear that you are continuing what you're doing. It's been a couple of years. It's almost yeah. almost like three years, right? Yeah. But you stayed through to the core. You are a speaker and you are a voice coach. You are a opera singer. You are a podcaster. Isn't that amazing? When you look back, from now to then do you have any regrets I suppose the only thing is that I have regrets that I wasn't able to demonstrate how good I was because I was underestimated a little bit and overlooked a little bit but then there is a story that I've got at 17 as well that I wasn't given a form to apply to university which you have to do in the United Kingdom And so my teacher said, no, you're not bright enough to go to university. And they had underestimated all of my grades by two grades, which is pretty significant. But I walked around to the adjacent school where my dad was headmaster. And I said to the secretary, do you have a form? They've run out at the girls' school. Could I have one, please? So I filled it in and I banged on the door of the headmistress and said, I'd like to apply for university. Please, could you write my reference? And I knew when I saw the glint in her eye that she would do it. Hmm. And yeah. Yeah. And within a week of the application going off, 
I was getting offers for interviews at top universities. I mean, that's a thing. Well, now you spoke about reference. That's a, a very big R word as well as reflection and reframing. I've found that the conversation of death is one that goes unsounded. Uh, have you had that conversation with death that you are going to die, that you may die today or tomorrow and what needs to be set up as a result of that? Do you know, it's a weird one because I've actually unfortunately been in a couple of situations where I have faced death. I was very, very lucky to be found in the bush at night in Kenya following a car crash mm. and um, the people that I was with unfortunately didn't survive and they didn't think I would for three days I fought for my life in a little tiny hospital in the bush in, in rural Kenya checking my pulse with a clock every 15 minutes to see if I was still alive the funny thing is because I've seen that you know it was in my face I think that the only thing that I can say is that I feel life to the full now that I'm so, so lucky, so lucky to be able to walk, so lucky to be here, so lucky with my family and speaking to you without being woo woo about this. I am just grateful to be alive. Well, I am grateful you are alive as well. I can feel the love, Susan, <laughs> my friend. This was such a great pleasure. Before we leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Oh, do you know, thank you very much to listening to what I do and for the interview. I'm just so grateful to have the opportunity to share one or two little tips with your audience. And, um, you know, just go for it push that fear away because you're worth it love it again amazing audience susan heaton a right susan thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 minute convos with angel jones this podcast is produced by pod edits visit podedits.com for professional podcast publishing 